Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Indeed, Lord, we give you, O Lord, all the glory, the honor, and the praise, O God. All praise be to the Lord our God. For it is you, Lord, who has saved us. Saved us by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Because you love us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take this moment to say thank you. Thank you for all your mercies. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for your love, your compassion that fail not. Great Lord is your faithfulness. We thank you. Jesus, we thank you. You saved us. You delivered us. You glorified us. You sanctified us. And you gave us your authority over all the forces of darkness. We call your name. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. The name that saves, the name that heals, the name that delivers, the name that blesses. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, at the mention of your name, every day bows. And yes, glory to you, every tongue confesses that you alone, Jesus, are Lord to the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. To us, a son is born. To us, a child is born and a son is given. The government of our lives, Lord, rests on your shoulders. You are responsible for us. And we say you have done a good work for this, Lord. We are grateful. In Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts, Lord, through your word. May the word work wonders, wonders, transform us. May the word break into pieces the, the rocks that Satan has hurled against God's people. Pull asunder gates of brass, any manner of judgment against anyone. Let it fail. Let it fail. Let it fail. Whatever judgment, spiritual judgments, legal judgments, let it fail. Because the handwriting of ordinances against us has already been nailed to your cross and you've taken it out of the way. And we have passed, passed from judgment to life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free. So I pray for freedom today through the word and by the power of your spirit. Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The revelation of the blood of Jesus. The revelation of the blood, the speaking blood of Jesus. The revelation of the speaking blood of Jesus Christ. I think I'll qualify it by using the word speaking. The revelation of the speaking blood of Jesus Christ. Let me take you from Genesis chapter 4. We just want to establish right here that blood speaks. So let's look at Genesis 4. It's easy to find Genesis, the first book of the Bible. All right, so quickly, Genesis 4. And verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? He said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? This is verse 10. God said to Cain, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. You see, blood speaks. Blood cries. Abel had been killed, but God said in the spirit realm, I hear a voice crying. And it is the voice of your brother. If the voice of a human being cries, don't you think that the voice of God 
will cry louder and better. Praise God. So verse 10 of Genesis 4 says, The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. So blood speaks. Amen. Amen. And I just said, if the voice of a man, Abel in this case, was crying, then the blood of God would cry better. Amen? Amen. Stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And louder. Hallelujah. Let me show you that the Bible actually says God has blood. Ha, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me show you. All right. Acts chapter 20. Now, of course, by God here, I mean Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not, I'm not referring to God the Father. Amen. Because scripture doesn't tell us that God the Father has blood. Right? God is a spirit. Amen. Amen. And his pure spirit body or being does not need blood like our human flesh needs blood. But Jesus had blood because he became human like us. But before Jesus became human like us, he, Jesus, was actually called the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Right? That's in John 1. Okay, but I want to show you Turn to Acts 20. Acts 20 and verse 28. The voice of the speaking blood of Jesus. We have established from Genesis 4 that blood speaks. Amen? Right? Remember? Now, Acts 20, verse, what verse did I give you? 28. 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, the, sh the, the sheep of God's pasture, the believers, Christians in the church. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the what? Church. The church of God. So the flock that's the church of God, which he has purchased. Purchased with what? His own blood. It is very clear in scripture that we have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? But notice in verse 28 that Jesus' name is not mentioned. Look at it carefully. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flood over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of whom? The church of God. The church of God. Which church? He, he who? God has purchased with his own, his own blood. So, so far, who has he been talking about in Acts 20, 20? You probably have never really looked at this before. But now you see that in Acts 20, 28, who has not been mentioned? Which, who of the Trinity, which, which being or person of the divine Trinity has not been mentioned by name in verse 28? Jesus, Jesus has not been mentioned by name. The Holy Spirit has been mentioned. God has been mentioned. Jesus has not been mentioned by name. In verse 28, look at scripture. But scripture is telling us that God purchased us with his own blood. So that's telling you that the person who died for us, who shed his blood, is God. He is God. It's very clear in scripture. Verse 28 of Acts 20. 
take heed to yourselves, to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit, so God the Holy Spirit has been mentioned, has made you overseers to feed the church of, he didn't say Jesus Christ. He said the church of the Holy Spirit. He said the church of God, which he, who is he talking about here? God. Come on, stay in scripture. I know you have all the answers, but let, let the scripture speak. Amen. The church of God, which he, he who God has purchased with his own blood. So the person he's speaking of here had blood. And that person is called God in this verse. It's very clear. So God bought us with his own blood. God has blood. But it's not God the Father. It is God the Son. Amen. So without mentioning Jesus in the context, he's telling you that Jesus is God. Whoever Hallelujah. bought us with his blood is God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is God. Go to 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1. We're not learning a lot today. 1 Peter 1. Verse 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, you're not redeemed with silver and gold. You're not redeemed with corruptible things. You're redeemed with incorruptible things. So if you're redeemed with incorruptible things, then you are incorruptible. Come on, church. There's a part of you that is incorruptible. Your spirit is incorruptible. Amen. Amen. And if you can work on claiming your soul, reclaiming your soul, territories of your soul, where Satan may be, you know, messing up your soul or attacking you, if you can claim your soul and bring it under the government of your spirit that's incorruptible, then those areas of your soul that you reclaim and bring under the authority of your spirit will become incorruptible. Amen. And even your body, that is corruptible still. Even your body, that is mortal still. The part of your body and the operations of your body that you can bring under your soul that is under your spirit. And the part of your body that you can bring under your spirit that is incorruptible. Those parts of your body that you bring under the authority of your spirit that is incorruptible would render your body untouchable by the devil. Mm. Amen. 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 You can keep yourself from the wicked one being able to touch even the parts of your life that are still yet to be totally saved. Your body will not be totally saved till you go to heaven. But until you go to heaven, you can still bring your body under the dominion of the Spirit of God in your spirit, under the dominion of the Word of God in your spirit, which will render Satan's activities and operations, even in your body and the physical realm, inoperative. Come on, church. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, then he that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Mortal means subject to death. Mortal, mortality. Has to do with death. Right? And your body is still subject to death. But if the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, and you allow him to quicken, make alive even your mortal body, then that which is mortal shall be swallowed up by immortality, even in this world. Amen. 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 It is a revelation that you get of Jesus Christ, who is and what he has done for you, that brings you out of the dominion of the enemy. Amen. Into the kingdom of God, here and now. Meaning that you don't have to die to go to heaven before heaven's life operates on, in your life on earth. Amen. 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 Let your spirit receive it. Amen. Praise God. I just throw this at you, at you and continue going on. Just to support it. Think about this. Everybody knows this. Almost even unbelievers know this. What, what is called, I'm, I'm going to start coding some, something and tell me what people usually call it. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What do people call that? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Even unbelievers know, that, know it. Right? Yes? Amen. Yeah. You used to know it before you got born again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you are afraid, you prayed it. <laughs> when you're in trouble, you just said the Lord's Prayer. Thinking that's what will get you out of trouble. At least some of us did. Right? Okay. It's not really the Lord's Prayer. It's the believer's prayer. It's a prayer. The Lord's prayers are the prayers he prayed to God. Like in John 17, he prayed prayers to God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed his prayers to God. This is a prayer he taught us, his followers, to pray. And he didn't say repeat this prayer. He said pray after this manner. Pray in this fashion. Pray in this way. So he gave us a model, like a blueprint or a pattern. You got my accent? Right. P A T T E R N. And you're gonna make a dress, some item of clothing. Usually there's a what? Uh, you see, you see how she said it. <laughs> All right, that's a pattern, and you make it according to the pattern that's given to you, right? Or you're building a house. The architect or somebody draws, you know, architectural rendering, the blueprint, the plan, and you build it based on the plan. Yeah. Amen. Do you see this? Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Yes, he is. Amen. So I'm, you got it now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Oh, how I love him. Amen. Amen. All right, just so everybody follows this, we're talking about the speaking blood of Jesus Christ. The, the blood has voice. If you speak, you have voice. Right? Yes. Blood has voice. And the blood of Jesus is always speaking. Amen. Amen. We open up with Genesis 4. The blood of a human being, Abel, killed by his brother Cain, was speaking to God. Crying out to God. So even when you don't see the blood, the blood is still there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even forensic scientists can prove when somebody got killed and they, they spilled the blood and they come and clean the carpet and you're gone. They can come and prove to you scientifically that blood has been shed here. Blood speaks. Blood speaks. Amen. I think that the church should take grab hold of these truths and revelations yeah. even better than the world. Yeah. It's unfortunate that sometimes the children of this world are wiser, craftier, wiser in their generation than the children of light. Yeah. Like I just gave you an example of how forensic, forensic scientists can prove that something has happened here. Some of this blood was shed here and it's been wiped, it's been cleaned, but they can prove that it was here. Children of the world. Children of the world. And sometimes it's so hard to convince a believer. What, at the moment you say it to a scientist or somebody in the world, oh yeah, yeah, blood talks. You can pour blood in a bathtub and wash it away and we can come and prove to you that somebody shed somebody's blood here and they'll arrest the person. Blood talks. If I told somebody whose job, you know, that's what it, uh, the blood talks, they're like, oh yeah, pastor, I get it. Let's go and move on. Tell me another yes. thing, because I got this. Yeah. I'm telling you, church, the blood of Jesus is speaking yeah. for you. Yeah. It cancels out debts. Yeah. It cancels demonic activity. Yeah. When you walk in the light of the word of God, the blood of Jesus constantly speaks better things for you. You have been called to a new and a living way. There is no defeat in God. There is no sickness in God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now catch this revelation which everybody knows in the Lord's Prayer. I would just call it the Lord's Prayer because people are familiar with it. It's easy. Right? But it's a believer's prayer and it's a model. It's a pattern and you base your prayer on it. Now in this prayer or part of the prayer, Jesus said you pray and you worship God. You know, start with worship our Father who art in heaven. You have to have a relationship. He's your father, you are his child. Yes? Amen. How does he become our father? 
through faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen. God isn't your father because he created you. God is your father because you believed in his son Jesus and received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. In this world, there are people, everybody's created by God, but not everybody's a child of God. Amen. In fact, there are people who claim they don't believe in God. So, so you can't be his child. You are his creation, but you're not his child. All right? So in the Lord's Prayer, which is the believer's prayer, a model prayer, it says, pray like this. You have a relationship with your father. Know that you have, you have a father who loves you, who cares for you. Come with worship. Adore him. Magnify him. Because the moment you start magnifying God, adoring God, your problems become small. What was like a giant to you becomes a grasshopper to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. What was like a giant to you becomes a grasshopper to you. By the way, God gave me a revelation, uh, a vision this, this, this week. Spraying for God's people. God gave me a vision. I saw this giant. He was so huge. I mean, we know Goliath was like 9'6". How tall was Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> You know, some of the basketball players are seven feet, you know, six, seven, six, nine, seven feet. Imagine that Goliath was nine, six. And there were five of them. Did you, did you know that Goliath had brothers? Yeah, there were five of them. That's why David took five stones. He's like, I'm taking you out and all your brothers. <laughs> so he took five stones. But all he needed was to take Goliath out. Once he took him out, the rest of them fled. <laughs> Amen. But I saw this vision. God showed me this vision of a giant, which is what I saw is bigger than 9'6", which is taller than 9'6". And this giant looked like a mountain. I mean, that's that huge. But he was stuck in mud. He was stuck in mud. He was frozen in mud. I could see the mud, you know, red dirt, mud, mud. I could see it. He's stuck in it like that. And he is, this is fun, was funny to me though. His feet are out of his shoes. So I could see his shoes and I could see his feet. His shoes were, uh, you know, somebody's laying down. His shoes would be exactly where his feet are, but separated from his feet. So you could tell that his feet would go into these shoes. Mm -hmm. His shoes were separated from him, mm -hmm. but at the, beneath where his feet are. And he's stuck in this mud, laying there, frozen in mud. Mm -hmm. And his shoes, his feet are out of his shoes. What that signifies is that the giants in your life have no authority. Amen. When your feet are not in your shoes, Spiritually, it has a significance. What it means is that you don't have power here. You are not the boss here. You get it. Amen. Well, even when God met with Moses, one of the days he met with Moses, he told Moses, when he was calling Moses, God was a shepherd and God's calling him to come lead his people. God's basically telling him, you'll be leading your life from now onwards. I take authority and dominion. You do it my way, not your way. So God told him, where you're standing is set apart for me, God. It is consecrated, hallowed ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off your feet. Do you need natural things, but they have spiritual significance. Tell it, it has a spiritual meaning. Tell it, tell it. And if God said it, it must be important. Yeah, it must be important. God said, take your shoes off your feet. And Tell Moses it. did that. Tell it. Amen. You know the story of the prodigal son. Later on in the New Testament, Luke 15, that Jesus, so in Moses' case, it was God the Father. Now it's Jesus telling us the story of this boy who went, you know, prodigal son. He's just all over the place, wandering and insane and all that. Comes back to his family, it's his father, his father sees him. There's a party for him. You know the story. Luke 15, you can read later on. But what was done to him was he was given shoes back to where? His authority was restored. What you and I lost in the Garden of Eden because of Adam's sin has been restored to us through Jesus' shed blood. And
and you're learning today that the blood is still speaking. So your authority is always in operation. Your authority is always active. Your authority works today. Amen. You get born again today and you have given authority today. Then you have the same authority that somebody who has been born again has been walking with God for 50 years has. Your authority doesn't get bigger because you get bigger or because you get older in Christ. Come on. Christians don't get this because when it comes to authority, we're always thinking that someone else has the power. Benny Hinn has the power. Uh, somebody give me another name. Yeah, I'm just mentioning names. But people think that way. T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes has the power. You know, and, and we just always, people think like that often. Correct me if I'm mistaken. But people think like that. And I'm telling you, that is wrong thinking. Last week I told you that I'm going to teach you some things today to open your understanding. There's things we do in the body of Christ. That's actually wrong. The way we think is wrong. Amen. Amen. And if you're thinking wrong, there's no power operating in your own life. It's not that God doesn't want to use you. It's not that God was not going to do powerful things in your life. It's because your wrong thinking is hindering you from seeing the work of God in your own life. Tell it, Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Tell it. Amen. But if you're thinking right, according to the scriptures, then the word has a free flow in your life from your spirit through your soul on, into man. the body and into every area of your life. Tell it. Tell it, Holy Spirit. Amen. Tell it. Amen. Are you learning something? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you think right, come on now. According to God's word. That's why you've been talking about thoughts and all that. Well, if you're not renewing your mind with the word of God, according to Romans 12, you're still conformed to the world. And Satan will be whipping you. That's right. Although you have authority over him. That's right. Amen. You'll be like the prince walking on the ground and the, and the servant is riding the horse. That's right. And the Bible says that's not right. When servants... I'm riding the horse and the prince is walking. Right. You are royalty. Amen. You are children of the living God. Who is purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. Before some of you came in here, I taught in Acts 20 verse 28 that we have been purchased. God has purchased us. Us with his own blood. So God has blood. Just to make that point that it sticks in your heart, I said it that way, God has blood. Because when you say that way, people are like, what are you talking about? To get your attention. God has blood. But the God we're talking about is God the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The person who died for us, shed his blood for us, is God. Amen. And his blood is active. His blood is operating. His blood is working. Praise God. Let me finish this. In the Lord's Prayer, you have a relationship with him is your father because you believe in Jesus Christ and received him. Amen? Amen? You worship the Lord. You magnify the Lord. The Lord becomes bigger. He's, he's greater than all, but he becomes to you in that moment bigger than your problems. Amen. That is why it's important to worship the Lord and magnify him. Otherwise, in your eyes, you're going to think you're a grasshopper. And the opposition is the giant. Come on, Holy Spirit. You're going to be a grasshopper in your own mind. People said that in the Bible. They had God as their God, but they still thought they were grasshoppers. The image they had of themselves. What I'm saying is that when you worship the Lord and magnify Him, God becomes so big in your own eyes Hallelujah. and in your heart and in that environment. And when praises go to God, blessings come. When you lift God up, the enemy bows. Amen. Amen. So the giant becomes a grasshopper to you. <laughs> and then you become like the giant. Yes. God showed me a vision of a giant of a man who was like a mountain. But no matter how big your problem is, your problem has been defeated. He has no authority. I saw his feet out of his shoes. Amen. The devil has literally been defeated. Amen. 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 That is his feet have been taken out of his shoes. 
That is that defeated kind. Amen. Which makes him defeated with a D E F E A T. But it had to be first D E F E E T. Amen. I saw that. And he's immobilized. He was stuck in mud, in dirt, where he belongs, under your feet. May the serpent eat dirt and not bite you. Praise the Lord. All right. So our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Jesus said, when you pray here on earth, pray that God's kingdom will come. Let me ask you a question. Wherever you are, whatever is going on, if you pray and God's kingdom comes, will the devil's kingdom exercise dominion over you? No. No. Look at Jesus. Jesus says, hey, guys, let me tell you this. You can pray to your Father in heaven for his kingdom to come in your life so that the giants in your land, they will be defeated. They will flee from you. They will become breakfast for you. Eat them like eat bread for breakfast. Because their defense has left them. Their power is gone. They have no authority. Satan and sin has no dominion over the church of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The devil has no dominion over the church of Jesus, whom he purchased with his own blood. 1 Peter 1, verse 18, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations, received by tradition from your fathers, don't walk by tradition. There's no power in it. It makes the word of God of no effect. Walk in the word. But you are redeemed with what? Verse 19, redeemed, you have to continue with a thought from 18. You have not been redeemed with corruptible things, but you are redeemed with what? Incorruptible things. Yes? Verse 19, redeemed with what? With the precious blood of Christ. We are redeemed. You are redeemed. You're not going to be redeemed. When I was a boy, you know, growing in Christianity, I used to think that I'll get eternal life when I go to heaven. That's what I used to think back then. Until I found out in scripture that I have eternal life now. And God, God wrote to us. In 1 John 5 verse 13. God wrote, he says, I'm writing this to you. 1 John 5 13. He said, I'm writing this to you. That you may know that you have eternal life. I'm not done with 1 Peter. But if you can give us that. 1 John 5 13. You can give us 1 John 5.13. I'm going to point something out to you. 1 John. I just want you to see that you, you must know this. You have eternal life. 1 John. Let's do this together. 1 John 5.13. These things have I written unto you. He didn't even say I'm going to write to you. Come on, church. Yeah. I have written unto you. I'm teaching. So you got to follow let your spirit run with this. I have written unto you. Amen. Somebody wrote to you. You received it. Sent you an email. You know when you send an email, you press send. It's gone. Yeah. It hurts when you press send and you realize, mm, that's something I shouldn't have said. Yeah. You know. I think they tried to come with a technology where like within 10 seconds, you can, you know, you can yeah, retrieve it. After 10 work. seconds, that's it. It doesn't work. And then once you send it, it's always there forever and ever. Yeah. So be careful what you send. Yeah. Be careful what you put out. I don't know how true this thing is, but something came today, this week, that beginning this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, everything that you put on social media there's actually a bill that the government has a right to save everything, to go through everything. Is that really true? Yeah. That now they actually have come out clean that, I mean, we've known all along that, you know, they're spying on us. But is that really true that now there's actually a law that says you and I have no rights anymore to anything that we put on us? Wow. That sounds to me like a police state. 
That's very dangerous in a country like the United yeah. States of America. Hmm. Where we trumpet personal rights and privacy over anything. If that can happen here, then what about, I won't mention another country, but <laughs> anyway, let me leave that alone. Just be careful what you put out there. Amen. Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Let me ask you a question first. Do you believe on the name of the Son of God? Yes. yes. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Okay, so is he writing this to you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Really, really sure? Yes. All right, then look. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may, you may no. know. You may know, not wish, not hope, not think, not even believe anymore. Now, now, you know. No. You know that you have. He didn't say you're going to have. He says you have eternal life. 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 Eternal life. You have eternal life. I was telling you, when I was a boy, I used to think that when I die, I used to think, you know, eternal life, everlasting life. So everlasting, I was like, okay, that can be in time. That has to be like, it just lasts forever. So that's how I used to think about eternal life. You know, in fact, even when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, you know, at the age of 12, at that time, the way we were taught, I used to really think that I have to go to heaven before I get all my benefits. Right. Uh, that's, that's what I used to think. And then I remember when I was uh, 21. 21? Yes. When I was 14, God told me that he had called me to do his, his work. And I knew that when I become an adult, for the rest of my life, i would be a minister of the gospel. I knew when I was 14. Mm -hmm. And I told God I'll do it. The only thing is that I don't want to be poor. Amen. I'll do it, but Amen. I don't want to be poor. Because back then, a lot of the preachers that I knew were poor. And I didn't want to be poor. I actually felt that I was intelligent enough, you know, through education, to make something of my life. So why should I exchange that? I can go through school and get a better life if then do this ministry thing and be poor. That's like, God, okay, I want to serve you. I want to do this. I was 14. I talked to God. I said, okay, I'm going to do that. I don't want to be poor. So not understanding a whole lot and not having anybody to teach me like Paul was teaching Timothy, mentoring him. I didn't have a mentor at that time. You know, I just kind of, you know, was running away. And when I was 21, I said, okay, I give up. I'm going to do it. I, I give up. Show, I have to shorten the story. I can't tell you. So I gave it. But I remember feeling that I needed something more to help me live this Christian life. I've gotten to a point in my life where I realized that I didn't have to wait to go to heaven to have authority, to have victory. I, I just felt within me, it, it's possible to live free, free of these satanic attacks and have authority over it, have power over it. But I didn't know how to get it. So it bothered me for a long time. And one, one morning, uh, a friend of my brother, a brother who's a, who's a minister, who actually raised me in ministry. Now, fast forward later on, now he's raising me in ministry. But before that, a friend of his, of, of his came to visit. And we had prayer meeting in our home uh, that morning. And people saw visions and all that. So the friend was explaining the visions. He has a prophetic anointing. He was explaining these visions of what God had done, that God wanted to enter our home use that home to bring a revival in the country. And I was like, 
really far out, you know. And from that word, people are going to be sent all over the world. And here I am today. From that day, things that God said, which we didn't understand. So he's explaining to me, and he explains all that. And I said to him, you know, see, all this is nice and good. Yeah, all these good things, you know. God will do a work here, revival in the country, and people will be raised here and go out and preach the gospel and all that. Yeah, I'm all for it. I knew I will do this when I was 14. But I'll tell you something. I feel like I'm struggling. Struggling living this Christian life and being victorious. And something is lacking. I don't know, but I just feel like I need power. I need I need some power to help me walk in victory. And, and so I knew in my mind I needed power. Some power. Something beyond me. Mm -hmm. Need some divine power. Some boost. You know, like the battery of my car is dying. My car is sputtering. It's not going. And I need to jolt it. You don't know how you like jump start. Okay. I just kind of feel, but I just need to know that these things were in the scriptures. So the moment I said him, I just feel like I need power. His, his name is Andrews. We call him Brother Faith. But the moment I said to him, I need power, he said, oh, well, yeah, but that, that's in the Bible. I said, what? He said, let me show you. And he said, you know, God promised uh, in Joel chapter 2 that he pour out his spirit upon all flesh, young men and young women. And he said, the moment he said young men, I was like, okay, yeah, I qualify. You know, I'm excited. I'm 21. I'm like, yeah, okay. So young men, young women, they'll prophesy, see visions. And, and, and he said, you know, but later on in Acts chapter 2, in Acts, he said, no, he said, in Acts 1, Jesus said that in verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then in Acts chapter 2, the power came. I mean, at this point, my, my, my interest is peaked. I'm like, yeah. There's, this is what I've been waiting for. Then he, so he goes from Joel 2 to Acts. I've never forgotten that. I can tell you what he told me that day. Never forgotten that. So he goes from Joel 2, 28, and then he does Acts 1, 8, and he does Acts 2, 1 to 4, and then he said in Acts 2, 38 and 39, if you believe in Jesus, you know, uh, he forgive you, this promise is for you and for your children. And the moment he said children again, I was like, okay, that, that really means I can get this thing. So I said, well, how can I get it? And he said, well, look over here. And it takes me to Acts 19. He says, you know, there are some people who believe in Jesus Christ, like you do, but, you know, they are not being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because Paul was asking them, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And at that point, I was like, yes, that's it. Since I believed in Jesus, I have not received the Holy Spirit. I have believed in Jesus. But I've been missing this Holy Spirit that you just showed me is power. And I knew I needed power. I just didn't know that it was the power of the Spirit. I needed some boost. And God knows exactly what you Amen. need. Yes, he did. And the moment my cry came out, the Spirit of the Lord used him to teach me about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he prayed for me on the 18th of January, 1982. And I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Man, I was like, ooh, it was so good. I had this power, and I was praying in tongues. And the reason why he took me to Acts 19 was to show me that people prayed in tongues as well. So I saw that there was something extra that I was going to get in addition to the power. I got this gift of praying in tongues. So I was just ready. You know, he said, okay, we're going to pray. And he prayed a simple prayer. I can't remember. He said, Father, baptize your son with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I said, Amen. But when I said, Amen, it was like, Amen. <laughs> and I was going for it. Hallelujah. And I've been running for God ever since. Amen. 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 I didn't understand it all, but I sensed that I needed power. Mm -hmm. And when the Spirit through him connected with 
what my spirit needed, I ran with it. Amen. Same thing will happen in your life. Amen. The Lord, something will be going on in your spirit, will stir up something in your spirit. You don't have all the answers, but the moment that the spirit stirs your spirit, and the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit, through a preaching, a teaching, a vision, a revelation, whatever, the moment there is that connection, you know, like you told me, the jump start the yeah, car. Yeah. There's a, a dead battery or dying battery, a weak battery, but there's a powerful one here, yeah. and you make a connection, right? Usually you connect, yeah? yeah? yeah. You connect the wires, yeah? yeah? And then you start this car, and the power just comes out of this into, yes? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so this is like that. The Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. There's a strong, good car here. There's a weak one there. And you make a connection. Amen. All right. So when you are anxious, disturbed, worried, mm. something is not right, but you're seeking, you're praying, mm. you're looking, God help me. You know, and something comes from God, from a teaching, a word, a vision, a revelation in prayer, whatever. You're driving. And this thing comes to you from the Spirit of God, out of nowhere, like Boom. And it connects with what you've been praying for, looking for. That is the good battery. I mean, the, the strong car. Jump starting the weak one. You see? When that connection is made, run with whatever you're sensing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You get it? Amen. You get it? Amen. Amen. It's kind of like the day that Jesus Christ was in the in Nazareth, in the synagogue, and he took the book of Isaiah, starts reading, and as he's reading, the people look at him. And Jesus said, yeah, that's right. What you're thinking, that's it. You know the Bible says Jesus knew their thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's looking, so what you're thinking, that's it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me right now to set the captives free. So if you're there and there's some sickness, there's some illness, some problem going on in your family and you hear this word, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to open blind eyes, to set the, the captives free. The moment that connection is made, you're like, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I receive. Do you get it? Yes. Move with God. Connect with God. Don't be like, hmm. Is he not the carpenter's son? The anointing is moving you this way. Mm -hmm. And Satan wants to pull you in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He is God. We read today the blood of God. He is God. The blood is working for you. And all of a sudden, you start listening to the devil. But, well, you know, how does he know how that can be? Uh, well, is he not? Is he really? Mm -hmm. That's the devil. Yeah. I took my time. I showed you from the Bible, God's word. Acts 20, 28. Take heed to yourselves and to the flock of God over which he, the Holy Spirit, has made you overseers. The flock whom he has purchased with his own blood. The church of God whom he, he who, God, has purchased with his own blood. I don't care at that point what my theology has been, what great-grandmother taught me, that point the Bible says God has blood. Amen. Amen. I may not understand all the biology, all the physics, all the chemistry, all the theology, all the whatever. I don't even be mad. All it is is God just showed me in the Bible the person who died for me, he shed his blood for me, is God. Amen. And if Eva's blood spoke, my God, then God's blood must speak louder and even more powerfully. And must speak mercy, must speak favor, must speak better things for me. I believe, Lord, I receive. And at this point, I'm jumping in my spirit and receiving everything that he has for me. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Learn to run with God. Learn to leap and receive what Jesus has for you. When the spirit witnesses with your spirit. Sometimes you go to church and just one word. You just hear just one thing that connects to, you, to the dying battery and gives you a jolt, a jump. 
run with it. Amen. Don't come back in the flesh. Is he not the carpenter's son? Are not his brothers and sisters? You see, and the devil let you stop there. They started with, is he not the carpenter's son? And the next thing they went to is, are not his brothers and sisters here with us? So they know their brothers and sisters. And before long, your mind goes to, yeah, in fact, I was playing with his brother the other day, and his brother said this about him. And, and he just keeps, and, and two, three minutes later, you have lost where the spirit is taking you. It happens all the time. You're in check receiving from God. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, but uh, pastor didn't comb his hair. Even though I have no hair <laughs> right now. Pastor didn't comb his hair. And, and then from hair you go, yeah, uh, my hair blower is broken. And then I mean, Satan can take you to some silly place like that in a flash. Just so that you miss where God was taken. But I taught you that your spirit has been redeemed with the incorruptible blood of Jesus. So there's a part of you that is hallowed ground, cannot be corrupted. My God! Woo! <laughs> There's a part of you that has been perfected by the perfect blood of Jesus Christ. And what you have to learn to do is to bring your soul under the government of your spirit. And your body under the government of your spirit. Thy kingdom come to swallow up whatever Satan is doing. And not just that. The one more thing he said there in the Lord's Prayer after he said, Thy kingdom come. You know, our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, uh, thy kingdom come. What was the next thing? Thank you. Thy will be done. Come on. Come on, Jack. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ah, ah, look at this. A human being, Jesus says, a human being who believes in him becomes a child of the Father in heaven. And that child can ask the Father for the Father's will in heaven to happen on earth. In other words, you can have the days of heaven here on earth. I saw that, that I don't have to die to go to heaven to get eternal life. I already know I have eternal life. Therefore, the things of eternal life must begin to swallow up the things of mortality. The things of eternal life must begin to swallow up any death that is coming against me. That is why he said, when I see the blood, I will cover you, I will pass over you, and when death comes, death cannot touch you. Come on. Hallelujah. Why? Because the blood is speaking for you. The blood is speaking life. The blood is alive and is speaking life for you. So death cannot touch you. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the people of Egypt saw it. They saw it. They saw how is it that you are in the same country and you got the slaves in your country that have been subjected to you, you have humiliated, you have controlled, and all of a sudden something happens this night and the firstborn of all your children and even your cattle, the spirit even knew that whatever came in that day, attacking them in that country, in Egypt, that night, knew the firstborn of dogs, the firstborn That's of right. cows, That's the firstborn right. of goats. My God. That's right. In the spirit realm, yeah. they could tell differentiate. Oh, that's the second one. That's the third one. No, we come for the first one. But in the, in the house, in the camp, in the territory, in the houses of the people of God in Israel, no firstborn of cattle, of human was touched. Why? Because God told them, I want you to take the lamb and I want you to slay the lamb and I want you to put the blood on the door post. And when you do that, I will cover you. God is drawn to blood. The blood of the land. The place where God sits and abides. The place where God overshadows. Where God puts his canopy is where blood, the blood of Jesus has been shed. 
You need to get this. Yeah. You, you all know Psalm 91. I know you know it. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What's that shadow? The covering. Yeah. The canopy. Yeah. The shadow, the canopy only comes where blood has been shed. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus. That is why the angels, the cherubims of glory, who overshadow the mercy seat, were placed by God where they were. Come on. In the Old Testament, the angels, there were two angels whose wings, under his wings, shall thou trust. Yeah. Yeah. Whose wings met over the mercy seat. And the mercy seat was where the blood was sprinkled. Hallelujah. And God said, I will meet with you there. So God is over the mercy seat because there's blood on the mercy seat. Amen. When the blood of the Lamb was shed and was put on the doorpost of their house, God came over them. Like the cloud. Amen. Yeah, like the cloud. Like the, you cannot <laughs> See, this is why, this is why he said, when I see the blood, I will what? Pass over you. The pass over you is not the reference to the death angel passing over. No. Passover, you is God Himself coming over you to protect you, so that after that, when the death angel comes, He cannot touch you. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. To touch us, Amen. Tells you my age, right? The young people are like, what song is he singing? Oh, the blood is speaking. Okay, so let's finish this part, though, about the Lord's Prayer. So you told me, after he said that kingdom come, what did he say next? Yeah. That I will be done, thank you, on what? This yeah. earth. Before you go to heaven, God's will can happen. Yes. So here's my question to you. Is there sickness in heaven? No. no. So doesn't that mean, therefore, that you can pray? And prevail. Come on. Ah. You see where we go with this? You can pray that what is in heaven will happen in your life before you go to heaven. Amen. But you know, sometimes as you're teaching this, instead of people running and say, yes, well then I'm healed, I'm going to be healed. Somebody goes, the devil makes somebody thinks, well how are you going to die then if you don't get sick? Oh, some pe are people, the devil will argue and put a question mark behind God's word. When God said it is written, the devil said, is it written? Is it really so? When God says, I have said, Satan will say, has God said? You start teaching some people that, you know, God's will in heaven can happen in your life here on earth. There's no sickness in heaven. And they'll agree. Amen, brother. Amen. No sickness. Amen. But the moment you say, okay, if there's no sickness in heaven, and Jesus said God's will in heaven can happen here on earth, therefore, you can pray sickness away from your life. They're like, mm. 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 Well, how are people going to die then? Well, who says you have to be sick before you die? Who, who, whoever says you have to be sick before you die? I know a man who was not sick. And the man said, ah, Man, 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 I've come to the crossroads. Man, I'm at this junction. I'm at this place where to leave and be with Christ is better. But for your sake, I choose to be here. He was not sick when he said that. I'm in a straight between two places. Whether to depart and be with Christ or to be here. He wasn't sick when he said that. Paul was the one who said that. But he said, for your sake, I choose to be here. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you, even if you're a grandparent or a great-grandparent, let's say you're 90 years old. You're like, yeah, I've had a good life. Yes, you have had a good long life. You have had it. We thank God for your life. Amen. Amen. And you can check out anytime you want. Yes, we know. But you can do what Paul did. 
Paul said, yes, to depart and go with, with Christ is better. But for your sake, I'll stay here. We need you grandparents to transfer to us, to the younger generation that are coming up. Your wisdom. In fact, we need some of you here to be interceding and to be praying. Amen. My Amen. God, how we need you. Amen. How we need you. Because sometimes, you know, the younger generation get themselves so busy with their job, their career, the same things you used to do 40, 50 years That's right. earlier. That's right. Now they are in that season where they are right. doing that. And then you are not as preoccupied as they are. And you have all this time on your hands to be like Anna the prophetess in the temple seeking God in prayer day and night for the unity of America instead of division, for the spirit of racism to be broken so that unity will come because a house divided cannot stand. But when the people are united and they are one, all the forces of hell cannot overcome them. So we need Annas. We need seniors today. Praying and seeking God because yeah. they've got all this time on their hands and they are seasoned intercessors. Amen. And when you pray, distraction will flee. Amen. So, because of your children and your grandchildren and the younger generation, stay alive. Amen. You see the choices that you can make. Yes. Amen. Satan, you know, when you're sick and especially man. When this thing is painful and you are tired and you are weary all the time, my God. Sometimes you can come to a place where you're like, I'm tired. I'm already born again. I know Jesus. Heaven is better. I'm going. And it may not be time for you to go. You, like the grandchildren of Jacob, may need Jacob to be alive. To put his hands on them and bless them. You haven't done that yet. Don't leave. Yes, you, for you, you had a good life for you. God bless you. You've had a long life for you. God bless you. But you don't live for you alone. Tell it. Tell it, Holy Spirit. Are you learning something? Am I teaching you something to help you? You can pray God's will in heaven to happen in your life here on earth. Don't check out simply because, man, financially it's been struggling, it's been terrible, and you've gone through 12 years of hardship, but man, I'm so tired. I mean, well, you know, I go to heaven, we walk on streets of gold, you know? Walk on streets of gold. Why do I have to go through all this pressure, you know? And then you start checking out in your heart, start checking out in your soul. Satan brings the slightest thing, and it takes you out. Because you already checked out. Don't. You don't have to go to heaven on a note of defeat. Come on, somebody tweet that right now. Tweet it. Come on, go ahead. I give you permission. Tweet it. <laughs> you don't have to go to heaven on a note of defeat. Church? Because he said in Ephesians chapter 5, he said in Ephesians chapter 5 that I will present to myself a glorious church. A church full of power. Full of power, full of might. And that's why in Ephesians when he prayed that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. Come on, church. Amen. It's your spirit getting on fire through the word. Amen. Are you like, yes, yeah, Satan, yeah. bring it on. Woo! Bring it on. You'd be like George Bush. Remember President, you know, young girl George Bush? Is one day he said, bring it on. You know, come on, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, devil, bring it on. We got it. Yeah, when you are the most powerful nation on earth, yeah, you can, you can mouth off. You can go on national and international TV and say, bring it on. <laughs> but when you are some kind of weak fish in the corner, so you don't say, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me just get myself together. First Peter. First Peter. A little child out here is having fun and I'm enjoying this. First Peter 1. So you be redeemed, verse 19, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 
Verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Oh my God, my God, my God. Look at this. The blood has been living forever. Look at it. Look at the scripture. Hmm. You've been redeemed today, 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago on the cross, with the precious blood of Christ. Right? And he was like the lamb that was slain in Egypt that protected the people, brought God's covering, and they were protected. Okay? So he's always been there. Alive. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Right now, current. The lamb is current. In English language, that's what he's saying. The construction there, that's what he's saying. The blood is living right now. Verse 20, he was foreordained before the foundation of the world. So before the world began, God said, it's by the blood I'll redeem them. And the blood was a living reality. Unless you don't believe that whatever God thinks is, Even us, in the Bible, it says, whatever you purpose to do, God takes it as done. I'm talking about born-again believers. Come on, church. Let's come to a place in the Spirit where we, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I was an unbeliever, I didn't even have to think to sin. Amen. The motions of sin just moved me. Before I could think it, I was sinning. I know you're different, but <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is this. When you get born again, you have a nature that is God. Godly. So it is natural and normal for that nature to do godly things. Just to be godly. Because that's what it is. The same way when I was a sinner, I didn't even think. I, you just, just sin. Because that's what you are. When you're born again, you don't have to struggle to live right. It's just you. You live it. What you have to be concerned about is when you have certain motions in your life that are contrary to God, but you are comfortable with. Amen. That's when you really have to be seriously concerned. For example, if you're a believer and you can be prejudiced and it does not bother you, you need to be concerned about your believing status. And I know some of you are following some of these teachings that are out there today that just because of grace, it doesn't matter what you do. Let me tell you, that's a teaching that Satan has inserted into this wonderful grace revelation that has come, which we need today. But Satan has inserted something into it that is dangerous. Yeah. Don't be comfortable with sin. We live in a period where God is gracious to us. But let me tell you something. I've heard some of these teachings that Jesus' blood covered sins of the past, present, and future. So all our sins are covered. No. 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 If that was the case, we would never need to repent of sin. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means there are certain sins that are not forgiven until you confess it. Amen. Amen. But when you confess it, the grace is available. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. Grace is available for all time. When Jesus died, you have not even been born. Amen. So he took care of the sin nature that makes people sin. 
This is why when you are an unbeliever and you are coming to Christ, you don't have to confess your sins to come to Christ. You confess Jesus Christ as Lord to be born again. Come on, church. Amen. With the heart, man believes. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What is that confession? Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you shall believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and was raised from the dead, and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. You're not confessing your sins. You're confessing the Lordship of Jesus. Your faith in the finished work of Jesus. His blood was shed. By the grace of God we are saved. But through faith. Come on. Yes. By grace are you saved through faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is acting on the word of God. So you act on the word of God that says Jesus Christ died for your sins. Long time ago before you were born. Amen. He died for your sins. So he took care of what happened in the Garden of Eden in the past. Adam and Eve. All the way up to he, Jesus himself, when he died on the cross, till we go to heaven. Took care of all that. So the moment you believe in Jesus, the sinner receives Jesus and gets born again. Everything's taken care of. Amen. And the blood is active and working for that person who is not a sinner, saved by grace. Still, he was a sinner. Come on. Amen. He is not a sinner. He was a sinner. Now he is a saint. You don't have to die to become a saint. And some three miracles be wet in your name. Then you are declared a saint. That's man-made. In the Bible, we are called saints because we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a saint. Amen. Don't pray to saints because then you'll be praying to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Come on, people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are born again by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You are a child of the living God by the speaking blood of Jesus. Now, as a saint of God, if you step out of line with the spirit of truth, the spirit of love, the nature of God. You become so uncomfortable. Yes. Yes. You are not yourself. Yes. So you quickly Amen. bring Amen. it under the speaking blood. Amen. And First John 1 9, when we confess Amen. our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness because the blood is always working. Yes. That is the grace aspect. But the grace isn't that because your sins are forgiven, you don't even need to bring anything under the blood that you are doing wrong today. No. Grace does not excuse sin. Grace empowers you to live this victorious life. And when you begin to be hateful and bigoted and racist and prejudiced, which America is suffering from, and there are a lot of Christians in America, something is wrong with their understanding of the Christian faith. Come next week, we'll continue. But let me throw this in so that you know it's supported by scripture. There was a man, a great apostle of God, he was called Peter. God used him mightily. But one day, in Galatia, Paul said to him, Peter, how come? You are prejudiced. Go, go and read in Galatians 2. How can you be prejudiced towards these Gentiles who have believed in Jesus Christ, who are not Jewish? You are okay and you are living fine. But what other Jewish brethren came? Because you are not strong in spirit and you are afraid of them, you began to separate yourself from the Gentiles. White people do it in America. White Christians do it in America. They are comfortable with God and the things of God and with you until other white people who may be prejudiced come around and they get afraid of them and they yield to them. They start separating themselves. Black people do it in America. Black people do it in America. Latinos do it. Asians do it. But what I'm saying is that if you are born again, 
and you're living this life under grace and you are comfortable with it, you need to check yourself. And I will prove to you from scripture that some people departed from the faith. Read the Bible carefully. Paul said, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. The dog has gone back to its vomit. The pig back to the mud when it was washed. Ladies and gentlemen, if you begin to live a nature contrary, to what you have believed. The spirit is coming in that is not of God. Envy. Cain envied his brother. You want to tell me there's no envy in the Christian church? There is. There are some pastors who will bring another pastor down because he feels that he's a threat. He's getting more church members than us. That, when I'm telling, and this is still the grace period, and I'm telling you, we need to bring things under. Let me read the scripture and then we'll pray. I have to continue next week. There's so much more. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 5. Just to show you again, the blood is alive and working. Revelation 5. And we end. Are you there? Yes. Verse 5. One of the elders said to me, I'll read 5 and 6. One of the elders said, weep not. Behold, look at this. Get focused on this. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Verse 6, and I beheld, everybody focus on verse 6, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a what? Lamb. Stood a? Lamb. A lamb. Stood a lamb. A lamb, as it had been slain. Another version says, as if it has just been slain. Revelation, John was present the day Jesus was killed in Jerusalem. Come on, John. The beloved. Remember when Jesus was dying on the cross? He turned to John and said, take care of my mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. So John was there. Mm -hmm. This John is writing Revelation years later. And he said, heaven opened and I saw a lamb standing fresh mm -hmm. as if he had just been slain. I'm telling you, his blood is not coagulated. Hallelujah. His blood is alive. Yeah. His blood is not dried up. It's alive. It is flowing. There's blood that is flowing from Emmanuel's veins. Cleansing and purifying. It is this blood that Job believed in that when he prays and prays for the sanctification of his children who may have done something wrong, they will be covered by the blood and nothing will go wrong with, with them in Job chapter 1. And so he sent for his children and prayed and sanctified them. It is this blood that throughout the Bible, people offer blood. And the moment God saw the blood, destruction ended. Look in the Bible. That's what you see in the Bible. Sometimes the people of Israel will do something and God is mad. He's had it with them. And they are about to be wiped out. And somebody quickly goes and sacrifices blood. And the hand of God stops. Because mercy is released when God sees the blood. Hallelujah. Old Testament, God's about to strike Moses' child dead. And Zipporah circumcises the child. Blood is shed. God stops. When I see the blood, I will protect you. I will cover you. I saw a lamb as if it had just been slain. So I was told, weep not. Behold the lamb. What is your anguish? What is your trouble? What ails you? Remember today, behold the blood. Stop weeping because the lamb has 
this way for you. He's standing as if it had just happened. Meaning it's active, it's working. Come on. Amen. Who will be like you and sanctify your children? Lord, let the blood cover them. And the devil gets frustrated and says, I can't even touch Joe's children because they are protected on all sides by what? The blood. The death angel comes to the house of Israel. He wants to go into the house. Pop. God is there. So it leaves. And in the same place, it touches other people. I see hurricanes not coming to your house. I see violence not coming. One scripture I know Pastor Meg likes, quotes a lot when she ministers to the children, young people. There'll be no complaining in your streets. May there be no voice of complaint or distraction in your house. Only peace I find. Come on, pray with me. Touch us with the blood. As we walk in the truth of your word, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from faults. Areas of our lives that have not come under the government of God, the blood reclaims them for us. This is my prayer for the house of God today. For their soul, their bodies, to come under the government of the Spirit of God in every area of their life because of the blood. Because of the blood. He said in Hebrews 12, 24, we have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Today I touch and agree with God's people that whatever voice is speaking against them, may the blood of Jesus cancel that. May the blood of Jesus speak life, speak favor in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive it. There was a voice crying and God said, the blood of God, God's blood speaks better. Whatever voice is crying against anybody, and as we've spoken today, even this nation, the voice is speaking against this nation. I pray today, oh God, let the blood of Jesus speak unity where there's racism and division and bigotry. Let this demon, this giant, be defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love blossom. Seeds of love, flowers of love blossom. All over this land and not only here in America but around the world in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, whoever is weeping, Lord, set them free. Anguish, sorrowing, set them free. May the blood give you life. May the blood give you life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Right there in your seat. You receive it in the name of Jesus. Right there in the name of Jesus. Manda barasto. Lebri in des tu faham randos kite. Shrabra tu zende lebrendu zikahagas. Everybody, please receive. Pray with me. Whatever was speaking against you and making you weep. Weep no more today because the blood of Jesus, of the Lamb, is speaking for you. Matarietos, Lady in the Bratos Keta Brinda Bahatas, Yam Deri Bikesa Baham Dorebe Sukita. And I pray, Lord, your will in heaven be done on earth. Let it be done in their spiritual lives. Let it be done in their souls. Let it be done in their bodies. Let it be done in their careers. Let it be done. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, whatever make anybody weep, family issues that make people weep, they are unhappy with it because they know it is not God's best for them. Oh God, let the blood speak better things concerning those family issues, those disagreements. It's happening. It's happening. In the name of Jesus, it is happening. Life for your family. In Jesus' name, run with your spirit. Leap and take it. When the spirit witnesses something to your spirit, come on, church. Go with it. Go with God. Because I sense it is happening. The blood is speaking. Restoration and harmony. 
reconciliation in families. The blood is speaking that, the blood of Jesus. So weep no more. God is restoring the heart of the daughter to the mother. The heart of the husband to the wife. The heart of the wife to the husband. The heart of the son to the father. God is doing it. My God. In the name of Jesus. And some of you things have been lost and missing for a very long time. All the years that have been stolen out of your life. The years that the palmer worm have eaten, the canker worm have we eaten, may God restore to you through what? The blood of Jesus. The blood of reconciliation. Jesus' blood. It's happening. Some of you, it's your careers. Your careers. For generations, for eight, for years, your career has been stuck. God is telling me there's restoration. Come on. Leap in your spirit. Leap in your spirit. Whatever witnesses of your spirit. Leap and receive it in Jesus' name. I pray for divine momentum. May God's power give a divine joke. Jump start your career moving forward. Where the family is stuck in that area. May God jump start it. Give you power. It's happening. My God. Macarete. Lift your voice and connect with God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the two areas that apply to you, I'm going to lay hands on you. Two areas, just two areas. The career that was stuck, quickly come forward. The years, for years, God is, for some it's for years, God will quicken, restore all the years.